Hey everyone, welcome to the next tutorial in the general Java game development series. And in this tutorial, we're going to be doing some final things with the state manager class, and we're also going to be showing you how to implement sound into your game, so loading sound effects and then playing them. So before we do that, the first thing I want to show you is the, this website where you can get sound effects. Um, thank you to Matthew for showing this to me, Matthew J234. Uh, it's called, if you go to Google, type in BFXR, you can see the address up here, it's bfxr.net, and you can randomize or you can edit your own sound clips, and then you can export them. So I'm going to be doing one now so we can use it in this tutorial. Just going to pick randomize until there's a good one. Alright, we'll use that one, kind of explosion sound. Uh, so once you've got one you like, you click export WAV, and then it's a little, it's a little bit glitchy this. So I'll show you what you have to do. Uh, if you find the right folder, what I've done is in this large, I've actually packaged everything up we've done in the tutorials, and then in the next tutorial, I'm gonna be making an actual game with all the stuff we've done, and in the description, there'll be a zip file, a uh, link to a zip file with all the source code, so don't worry about that. So I've got a package called SFX, and I've actually got a folder called Audio Clips, and what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to name it, and then you're going to need to put .wav and you also have to put speech marks around it because it won't let you save as file type for some reason so make sure it looks like that .wav with speech marks around it so it will save it as a .wav file otherwise you'll have to sort of right click and go open with Windows Media Player or whatever so anyway now that that's done I have it in this folder and we can play it. and you can hear it so let's begin in my uh, source packages, we're going to be making two classes today, one called Sound and one called Sound Manager. And this is going to be in the package um, SFX. And finish. This is our sound class. Let me drag the recorder across. Okay, so first things first, what we're going to want to do is um, we're going to need a constructor for our sound class, public sound. And what we need is um, a name for our sound, because we're going to be using that in collaboration with the state manager. So we can say uh, state manager dot play and then state the name of the sound. And you guys may not like to do it that way, but that's the way I've been kind of working with, with all the games I've been doing, kind of accessing stuff by names you give it. And I think it's just a more organized way of doing it. So string name is the first thing. And then we need a variable up here public string name and we'll also need public audio clip and that's actually going to be the clip itself and we'll name it sound and then we need a URL just call it URL and we import that and then what we're going to do is we're going to say this dot name equals name to just set the name and then we need to do a try and catch statement catch exception e um, print stack trace. Uh, okay, so once we've got our try and catch, what we want to do is we want to go, we want to call applet, and the applet actually has a built-in static method called new audio clip, and it's pretty much as easy as that. And then you just give it a URL. So, and then we also we want to set sound equal to that. So. Now what we have is we've got a name, our, our sound clip is named, and our audio clip is, um, sorry, our audio clip's been initialized, that's what I'm trying to say. So now we've got our constructor, uh, what I'm actually going to do as well is we're going to need an empty constructor that doesn't do anything, and you'll see why in a minute, it's because we need to make a method to grab a URL just to make it easier to use, and we can actually do that now. Um, what we want to do at the top here, we can make a private sound, also private static sound, we'll call it static sound, equals new sound, and that's the reason we have the empty constructor, so we don't need to give it a name or a URL, but when you use, um, uh, actually we can just make it private, so there's no chance of us accidentally using it. 
outside. So we now have a private constructor just to give us this static sound, and we'll use that in just a little bit. First, we're going to make uh, play, play and loop methods and the like. So public void play. Um, and this, what we're going to do is we need to create a new thread because we want the sound to run on a thread, and we're going to call start. And then as a parameter for the thread, we're going to call new runnable. And that's just make a new instance of that. And it has abstract method, which we all know is run. And in our run method, we can say sound.play. And actually, we're just going to first make sure if sound is not equal to null, just in case um, it doesn't get set properly in the applet, even though exception will be caught, but it's still nice to have that there just in case. And then what we're going to do is we can copy this method over to here, and we can call this method loop, because there's also a built-in method with an audio clip called loop, and we also want that to run on its own thread. And finally we need a stop, and we don't actually need a thread to stop it. We can just say sound.stop, and if sound is not equal to null, and of course name our method stop. And now that we've made play loop stop, we just want to simply make a thing to get a URL. So public static URL um, get URL. And we need a string file name. And what we want to do is this all this method needs to do is return um, that static sound, that's why we needed an instance of it to be static, so we can call it from within this static method static sound dot get class dot get resource and file name. And there we go. So now that we've got that, we've set up everything, we've made the new sound, we make sure play and loop are on their own threads. Uh, we can actually now make our state manager or our sound manager rather sound manager and this is going to look similar to our state manager so what we're going to do is we're going to make a public array list of sounds we'll call it sounds new array list there we go public sound manager and import array list and this is actually what we're going to be doing with the state manager class as well as someone pointed out in a comment video, I can't remember which one uh, they said it would be it's logical to use an abstract class which it definitely is so if you remember in the state manager class we call, we have this method called initialize all states and we don't to make it easier for us we want to initialize these states when a new instance of this object is created. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete those um, that block and we can put a semicolon there and we're actually going to make it public, public abstract void and that means if I can spell abstract right abstract there we go public abstract void and then abstract the class needs to be abstract for that method so now when we make a new instance we can initialize all the states and because this is public states we can actually just call it uh, within that method and you'll see what I mean uh, so now we've done that for the state manager you can close that because we're working with the sound manager in this tutorial so what we can do is below we can make public abstract in init sounds initialize sounds and then the class needs to be abstract and then we call that in the constructor so now that that's done we want some basic methods basic functions for the sound manager so we can have public void add sound sound s as a parameter and a string s for the name and we can say uh, let's see sounds dot add new sound oops and it could take s and I've just realized I've named them both s 
sound sound. Oh no, it needs a URL. Oh no, okay, so ah wait, I've done this wrong. We can just add the sound simply, delete that string, and because we initial we do the URL when we add the sound, so yeah. Public void remove sound sound sound. There we go, add remove, and then we want to methods for playing the sound. Uh, so public void play sound and what we want to do is uh, let's see string we need to take a string called name as the parameter and then we want to make a for loop to loop through all the sounds so we can say sound called s and loop through all the ones into sounds and then we can say if s if the sound it's currently on dot name equals the name that we entered then that means it's the sound that we want so we can play it so s dot play and I'm just gonna name this or we'll just keep it like that play sound uh, we also want loop sound and basically the exact same method loop sound and if this doesn't make sense I'll explain it all in just a second loop sound stop sound because there may be several sounds happening at the same time like there might be background music or something uh, so we can call stop on that and then we can also have a method called public void stop all sounds and all that needs to do is um, call stop on every single one so stop there we go so we've got play loop, play sound, loop sound, stop sound, stop all sounds. So um, public abstract void, there we go, make sure that void is in there. Um, so basically what we've done is, in our sound class, um, any time we make a new instance of a sound, we need to give it a name, so the sound has a name, so it could be jump, uh, collect, uh, damage taken, or what anything like that. Uh, we then supply it with a URL and that's why we made this method down here for ease of use to, so we can get a URL and then just stick it in that constructor and I'll be demonstrating this at the end. Um, so we then set the name to the name, simple enough. We then use try and catch to grab the sound f using the applets built-in method, new audio clip, and we grab that from the URL that the user entered. Uh, we then make play and loop methods which is which basically what we do is we make a new thread and start it and then let the sound play on its own thread and we do the exact same for loop and also for oh no we don't we don't do it for stop because um, it only needs to stop it doesn't need a thread for it so we then made our sound manager class and then we have an array list uh, casted to sound which is this class and then we call it sounds and in the sound manager constructor, we call the initialize sounds method here, which is abstract, which means when we make a new instance of this, uh, we have to fill this in ourselves. So we'll say sounds.add new sound, blah, 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 and we'll do that. Um, we've got methods for adding sounds, removing sounds. We then have play, loop, stop, and stop all. And we simply supply it with a name, and it will grab it if it has that. It will grab the sound and play it if that name exists or if you typed it wrong it will just do nothing so with all that in mind let's test this now basic I've got this main test class all it is is a JFrame just basically set up in the main method so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make sound manager call it s equals new sound manager and we're gonna need to import that and then it doesn't take a constructor but as you'll see it says implement abstract methods so we will do that and you can see we have our init sounds method and because we're kind of technically within that class when we're doing this we can call sounds dot which is the this array list here we can access it from our abstract method so sounds dot add and I'm gonna say new sound and what it needs, oh, we need to import this as well. What it needs is a name, 
let's just come up here. It needs a name and a URL. So we're going to give it a name. I'm going to call this... Uh, actually, what was our sound sound like? Let's just kind of explosion. So I'm going to call it explode. And then it takes a URL, and we can actually just use the static method within our sound class. So we can say sound dot get URL, and that's reminded me of another thing. As you can see over here, if I drag the recorder across, as you can see here, we actually have our sound in one package, and then within that same package, we have a folder called audio clips, which I've made, and that's got our sound dot wav in it. So what I need to do, uh, you may or may not need to do, depending how you set it up. I'm going to go into sound and in the get URL method, instead of just the file name, I need to actually have audio clips forward slash and then the file name. So I can go back to the test now, get URL, I can just call sound.wav. Um, so now that we've grabbed our sound and we've added it to that array list, what we can do is we can come outside and we can say s dot play sound and now what we need to call is the name explode and let's run this and there we go, the sound played and the JFrame doesn't really do anything it's just to stop the program from terminating the the moment it finishes and that's pretty cool. I think the way this sound manager works is really good because when you have a larger game and you need to access this from many places, this is just one example way you could do it. You could actually make this static and put it global to your class and then wherever you are in your whole game project you can just call um, main.soundmanager.playsound and then call whatever sound you have. So that is a pretty cool way of doing it. Uh, thanks for watching this guys, what time are we on? Let's check. Um, okay, thanks for watching this tutorial guys, I hope you enjoyed it. This is the last one now, and next tutorial I'm going to make a game, and then um, if I get new ideas in I'll carry on this series because I am liking it a lot, I'm enjoying making it. So next, stick around for the next tutorial because I'm going to be making Pong or something simple like that, just to demonstrate everything we've done, like sprite sheets, animations, input manager, all of that stuff. Um, so please subscribe if you're enjoying these, and again, the source code will be in the next tutorial, so uh, stick around for that. And thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.